Thank you for tuning in to the MFF Fireside Chat focused on holiday spending in the year 2020. I'm joined by the rest of the MFF team, where each of us is going to speak on a topic that we think is really important to consider as you look at holiday spending this year. With that said, I'm going to turn it over to my colleague, Judy Window, and she will take it from here. So I'm going to kick it off, and my focus was inspired by a blog or actually a two minute Tuesday video that Mike had done called the fear of missing out. And I'm going to focus on advertising and how tricky advertising can be. But once you know about advertising, you can't unknow it. So I'm going to kind of put some things in people's minds so you can kind of think about this holiday season, because it is going to be a little bit different, maybe you can notice something that you never noticed before. Um, one of the things that Mike said in the video was um, nothing is scarce these days. So the like the buy now, buy now, buy now stuff, you don't have to buy now. It, it's not something that you have to do. Um, the other thing that he had said on that video was if you want something, put it on a wish list. So I said, well, you know, you, you don't think about that. But when you were little and you were thinking about Christmas or the holidays and Santa coming, you know, I would always, my mother would get us those big Sears catalogs at the time. And, you know, we would each circle what we wanted. So it was like a wish list. So you can kind of think of the same thing and doing the same thing at the holiday season. So the whole buy now, buy now, buy now, um, it's one of those things that Black Friday kind of pushes on us, Cyber Monday pushes on us. Um, we have car commercials for Christmas, car commercials. So I saw this when I was looking up ideas and it, in the caption of this car it said, nothing says happy holidays like wrapping up debt with a giant bow. And if when you think about how crazy that is, I mean, you kind of want to give somebody a car for Christmas because you're seeing these silly commercials. The ultimate, the ultimate, the ultimate marketing campaign was done by Hayden Sandbloom. Does anybody know who Hayden Sandbloom is? Hayden Sandbloom invented Santa Claus the way we see Santa Claus now. He did the color of his suit. He, he worked for Coca-Cola. It was a Coca-Cola campaign. So Santa's red suit is Coca-Cola red. He usually has a bottle of Coca-Cola with him. He has this friendly round face that they did specifically so you would like him and you would want to drink Coca-Cola. And it was all just a marketing ploy. It was just a marketing campaign. So when you know that, when you know that the way we view Santa Claus was just a marketing campaign, it puts it all in perspective. So this holiday season, my gift to you is notice what's on TV if you're watching TV or notice what's coming by your social media. Why is it coming by? Marketing is something that kind of gets ingrained in our life and it makes us want to buy now. We don't have to buy now. Let's have a wish list for this Christmas. Emily is going to be talking about small businesses. So as I mentioned in my introduction, I am the volunteer and events manager for New Hampshire Granite State Ambassadors, and we're an integral part of the tourism industry for New Hampshire. And so we welcome visitors all over the state from the rest areas to the airport to the museums. And so one of the components of our mission is to com communicate and share with our industry and the general public, all that New Hampshire has to offer. So we're always looking for ways to educate our volunteers so they can provide genuine referrals to visitors in New Hampshire. So supporting local businesses is really important to us because it's ultimately a large part of what we do. So I'm going to talk a little bit about Small Business Saturday and the importance of these businesses to our community and why you should care too. So just for some background information, I researched some of the history of Small Business Saturday 
which smallbusiness.com shared that it started in 2010. It was created and sponsored by American Express. And as part of the 2010 promotion, the first 10,000 small business owners who signed up to participate received $100 worth of free Facebook advertising and the first 200,000 American Express card holders who pledged to use their credit cards on Small Business Saturday to support small businesses received a $25 credit. And then a couple other things is that in 2013, American Express began to use another trademarked advertising tagline, Shop Small, in its Small Business Saturday promotions. And that enabled the company to extend the marketing efforts throughout the rest of the year. And then in 2018, an estimated 104 million American consumers supported local retailers and restaurants, spending $17.8 billion on Small Business Saturday in 2018. So that was really exciting. And the entire Thanksgiving week, and quite frankly, the entire holiday season from November through December, focuses heavily on shopping and gifts. And Black Friday, as we've already talked about, is infamous for great deals, long lines, crowds, but it's focused on the box stores, and so is Cyber Monday. So this Small Business Saturday was the perfect way to include and highlight these small and local businesses during this time. So we all know that COVID has affected every aspect of our lives, including holiday shopping. It's much easier and safer to order items online. And when you have options like Amazon at your fingertips, it is really easy and fun to find the perfect gift. But Amazon is a big corporation. There are so many amazing small local businesses whose very livelihoods are counting on their communities to support them. So it's more important than ever to participate in Small Business Saturday this year and supporting the local businesses so that these businesses can live to see another year and to survive through this pandemic. Many businesses have changed how they're offering their shopping services. So some have increased their online presence or they've incorporated curbside services and this makes them more accessible. In order to combat the crowds of this big shopping week the, and the crowds for Small Business Saturday, many businesses have switched to offering promotions and marketing Small Business Saturday throughout the entire month, which gives you more of an opportunity to support them over a longer period of time. And this is in, includes many local towns like the Concord Chamber and in town Concord in, in New Hampshire are promoting these local businesses throughout the holiday season. So where would our communities be without our local businesses? I know that I want to be able to enjoy coffee next year at my favorite coffee shop or peruse one of my favorite stores or have a meal at my favorite restaurant for many, many years to come. So let's, I want to advocate for supporting our community this year and supporting our favorite local businesses during this holiday season. All right, I'm gonna hand it off to Mike and Mike is gonna be talking about budgeting. Thanks, Judy. It's nice. I'm sure that you can tell that I, I'm often outnumbered um, being the only male on the team. So I offer a different perspective than all of my counterparts. So um, I will try to be, you know, mindful of that. Um, but some of the things that I'm going to talk about are budgeting and wish lists specifically. But I want to preface this with um, all of what I'm going to talk about requires kind of forward thinking and time. So making sure that you're not performing the act of trying to find something for somebody for the holidays at the last second. Um, because the stress, the trying to just find something, you're often gonna grab something at a high price and not even think about it until after the fact, which will kind of lead to that credit card shock later on. Um, I think that there's also this, this really big push of uh, marketing advertisement has done such a good job of giving that sense of urgency and that you have to go above and beyond to be able to be adequate. Um, I, I think that that's really a, a scary narrative and it's false. Um, you should really think deeply and have a conversation with the people that you're actually going to buy for. You know, you don't have to buy for everybody. You really don't need, if there's no requirement to do anything for anybody necessarily. Um, but if you do want to do something for the people that you care about, have an honest discussion with them. Um, you know, this holiday is really for, you know, parents and grandparents doing really great things for their kids. It's almost like, you know, Emily, you can relate to like, you know, a wedding, who's it really for? It's more so for the parents of the bride and the groom. And that's why they pay for a good portion of it. Um, so really just think about those things as you're kind of looking at this, have a discussion with your partner, with your sister, your brother, your parents, your grandparents. Um, and in my case, it's often like, hey guys, like, don't, don't do anything for me. I just want to see you. That's, that's really all that I want. Um, and if you wanna do something nice for me, 
like just keep that in mind throughout the year. There's going to be something that's going to come up that's either going to be cool or, you know, something there's going to be a bump in the road where I could use some help. Like remember it then. Um, don't just feel the need to do it now and spend a ton of money. Um, but for budgeting, you know, think of the people that you want to buy for. Um, think about how much you want to spend for each person or take the other path of like, how much do you really want to spend total? And maybe write it down. And then go through the process of trying to source the things that you would like to get for these people. Don't buy them, just like start looking and take note of how much they're, you know, the total for each person is gonna cost. And then once you have all of those things, you know, maybe throw them on a wish list and let them sit there, come back and evaluate that. Take a look, how much was the stuff that you wanted to get for the person that you had budgeted a certain amount for? Oftentimes you might be surprised that that's well above what you had budgeted for. Um, that means maybe you'll go and try to find it for a cheaper price or you'll come to realize like, wow, that doesn't make sense. So I would encourage people to take pause, you know, think ahead of time, like how much do you actually want to spend, you know, and that will prevent you from that credit card shock in January. Um, some other things that I will mention briefly as Emily has alluded that I'm running out of time. Um, definitely have a conversation with the people around you that, you know, set expectations so that you don't go into this and disappoint somebody or vice versa. Um, I know definitely in like relationships, that's really important because sometimes the expectations are different. So um, those are some tips and tricks to think about as you enter this holiday season. And just remember throughout the year, you can do nice things for people. You don't need a holiday that was made up by Coca-Cola to justify doing something nice for somebody, whether that's a recommendation, um, paying for something for somebody, taking them to lunch, maybe, you know, paying for, you know, dance classes for um, a young family member, or even making a donation to an organization you care about, or, you know, buying that local coffee that we all love so, so much. So I'll stop there. Right, we're going to move on and we'll go to Jillian and she's going to talk about giving thanks this holiday season. Well, I think that um, what I have is not just necessarily for the holiday season, but it can be used throughout the year. Um, Mike, if you want to throw that slide up for me. Um, I, I, for those of you who don't know, over my lifetime, I've had five kids. And so getting gifts for grandparents and aunts and uncles has always been kind of a homemade thing. And so I thought of some of the ideas and, and stuck them on hand. Of course, Keith stole one of mine, um, stepped all over my coupon thing, but that's all right. Um, I have in the past um, made uh, one of my favorite recipes is lemon poppy seed bread and made it in small little containers. And then the kids help wrap it in saran wrap and put bows on and give it to neighbors and aunts and uncles and teachers. Um, we've made sugar scrub, um, white sugar, some essential oils. You can put color in for what color your oil is. Um, you can use coconut oil. You can use olive oil. It, it, as, just make it whatever you want. Um, the cutest thing I think is we've always done jigsaw puzzles and you've got old jigs. There's never a puzzle that's got all the pieces. And so instead of throwing it away, you can color them, make a frame, put a kid's picture in, put a family picture in um, and, and give that. Um, and like Keith said, you know, putting the coupons together, you know, an IOU, um, take you out to dinner, um, you know, spend some time doing something um, is something that's really, really cool. Um, the kids used to make those and hand them out for Mother's Day and Father's Day. You know, I'll give you one breakfast in bed um, and those kinds of things. Um, one of the things that we've done at Thanksgiving is use a memory jar where everybody gets a piece of paper and they get to write in and say what they're thankful for. Um, you could also do it at, for birthdays um, as well, you know, so you can share all these great memories. And then you can either keep them or redo it every year. Um, one of the things that I do is I seem to have come really good at propagating uh, bamboo plants. And so I have been redoing different plants and then find these cool little jars. And I give people these uh, bamboo because bamboo is supposed to be good luck. So I think we need a lot of that this year. Um, and then, of course, I'm going to show my age by talking about a mixtape. Um, 
when we used to take trips as a family, um, we would create tapes or CDs of all our favorite tunes so that we could play them in the car. So if you and your friends get together at some point in time, you like the same music, um, maybe you can put something on an MP3 or on a CD um, and do that. And then, uh, of course, the last one is regifting. Um, if you've been if you've got something over time and it was duplicated and I have a box that I keep things in um, that I find either on sale or redo, but um, just be very careful you don't give the gift back to the person it belonged to in the first place. It's not a good thing. Um, but there's lots of different ways that you really don't have to spend a lot of money on and you can think about people and you can show them that you've thought about them um, and just create stuff. Um, you know, you don't have to be super crafty to do it either, um, but it's always good to do. You can take that down now, Mike. Um, but these are just a few ideas. There's a lots, lots of other ones down there. And I think like what we've all said is just, you know, spending time with people, creating memories. Um, one of the things that we've done um, when I had my birthday this year was right when COVID started shutting things down back in March, um, we did a virtual birthday party on Zoom. Um, I have a Zoom account, so I used it. So we got together with friends and family around the world and we had a birthday party. So find different ways of doing things where you're, you know, you're not spending money, but you're still um, spending time with people and uh, see how that goes. Corey's going to be talking about holiday traveling. Well, so some of us have alluded this evening to the fact that perhaps many of us aren't traveling this year. So show of hands, how many of you are planning to travel the week after next for Thanksgiving? Like let's say more than 10 miles to your family's house that you quarantined with. Yeah, see, none of, all right, Judy might be going a little further, but none, not many of us are, okay. So here's the deal with holiday travel. Um, so for those of us on the call, how many of us remember the phrase over the river and through the woods to grandmother's house we go? Okay. So it takes on a new meaning this year because not many of us are gonna be traveling over the river and through the woods. Um, but just as fun trivia, that's actually from a poem that was written by Lydia Child in 1844. So that poem is about 200 years old. And the poem was actually titled, The New England Boys Song About Thanksgiving Day. So um, as we sing that song, we often think that, you know, you're getting in the car and you're driving to grandma's house. This year, AAA is predicting that about 50 million Americans will travel uh, in two weeks for Thanksgiving. Actually, it's next week, right? We're talking like nine days away. Uh, and that 95% of travel on Thanksgiving this year will be by car. Um, and I think we all know why and the safety that's put behind that. Some of the things to think about, um, the CDC is saying that short trips by car with members of your household with no stops along the way is the lowest risk category this year um, next to staying home. The great news from a financial standpoint um, around holiday spending is gas is cheaper in 2020 than it was in 2019. The price of the gallon uh, of a gas gallon of gas in 2019 was $2.60. This year it's about $2.20. Uh, the CDC also recommends that motorists pump their gas using, and we had this discussion yesterday, and Jillian uh, suggested this, um, using some type of a, she uses a plastic bag, but using some type of a sanitary wipe and a sanitizing their hands. Um, before and after, perhaps, um, they have pumped gas. Minimizing the contact when you get out of the car is key. So masking up and you're outside of the vehicle, making your stops few and brief. Uh, if you have to stop for food, driving through um, for food, better than going inside of a restaurant. I'm sorry, Judy. Um, or considering packing a cooler um, or a thermos for those cold days here in New England full of drinks and healthy snacks to limit your number of stops and also to save a little money. AAA has also launched an app. Uh, it's a trip mapping service called TripTick, which has doubled since last spring. 
And like Google Maps or other digital devices or apps that you might use, um, this is a website that allows users to enter where they're headed and to get the best routing options. And as an added bonus this year, it links to a useful map of United, all the states in the country, which shows the current state, county, and citywide restrictions based on COVID-19. Um, so that can be mask wearing, gathering sizes that you're restricted to, quarantine requirements to before you go and when you come back, uh, and dining limits. There are a couple of fun apps um, that for those of us who love to be app people on our phone um, that will help with travel during the season, Life360, Zenly, and Mama Bear Family Safety, which I think is hysterical. Mama Bear Family Safety are all free apps that allow small circles of friends and family to automatically share travel information and it tracks where you are for location and then a safe arrival. Um, one of the cool things that I like to do when I'm in the car, um, because I'm in the car a lot, is I love to listen to podcasts, which are free. Um, so I'm gonna ask you at the end of this, if you have a favorite travel app or a podcast that you like to use or that you'd share with us, um, but some of my favorite podcasts that you might wanna listen to one is called Phoebe Reads a Mystery. Um, and it's um, listening to this woman read an Agatha, Agatha Christie novel um, is really fun. Um, it's sort of like a podcast and it's kind of like an audio book, really kind of cool to listen to. I'm a big fan of The Moth on NPR, which you can download, which I love. And then just because we're talking money, one of my favorites that I listen to often is the Everyday Money Show. Um, so just a couple of things to consider as you travel. Uh, we're gonna hand it over to Lindsay and Lindsay is gonna talk to us about having the perfect Instagram family. Yeah. Um, I think this topic is ironic that we're looked at as one of the Instagram perfect families because we are far from it. It's amazing what you can capture and in that perfect little moment in your imperfect life. Um, you can see on my Instagram screenshots, they look real happy all the time, but I can tell you there's a few of those days where they didn't like me and I didn't like them. And, <clears throat> but we made it through and the next day was hopefully better. But when it came to Christmas, the first year we lived in our current home, I thought it was going to be massive and this huge ordeal. And I had grand plans. And then the house took all of our money and all of my plans and crushed me. So we started our homemade Christmas and all the ornaments you can see on that tree are ornaments they have made over the last four years in that picture. Um, we now have an entire tree worth of ornaments that they have made. And it started that way because we didn't have any money and I didn't want to spend my whole day saying, don't touch the tree. So if they knocked it over, they didn't break anything as long as they missed the TV and they could just put it back together. Um, but we made gifts for the grandparents. We um, made cookies for people and we took formula containers and cleaned them out and covered them in Christmas duct tape. Nobody knew the difference. They were probably being nice to me, but they claimed to not know the difference. Um, we found free things to do like visiting the Santa mailboxes and wearing our Christmas PJs to do it, to take pictures by it. Um, what else did we do? We made mistletoes for grandparents where I painted their feet green and added the little berries so it looked like mistletoes and then put it in a dollar store frame. I spent a dollar and the grandparents thought it was, well, two dollars because there's two sets of feet, but the grandparents thought it was amazing. And it and for my kids, the first year there, when they were one, all their gifts were hand-me-downs. I got them from um, other people that had passed them down. I put them into giant boxes because they were one and they were more interested in the box anyway. And it was great. It looked very um, generous and it wasn't didn't cost us that much money. And I make my kids donate every year their old toys. You need room for more, you have to give to somebody that doesn't have it. And I try really hard to teach them that the magic is in people, finding stuff, sharing stuff, making stuff, but not just buying it. All right, 
I'm going to, I'm going to hand it over to uh, Kendall because we are running low on time and then we can do a wrap up. And if anybody has any other questions, that will be great. Kendall's going to be talking about a changing world and how it's affected her and, and technology. Okay, so, well, I kind of like did my own take on it and I'm going to be mostly focusing on online shopping and online holiday shopping, just because that's kind of what came out of my thoughts. So personally, I haven't been affected since I've been online shopping my whole life, but I've been told by a lot of older people that it's been a learning curve because now they're required to order online more um, because you can't just go to a store or like even uh, like when the pandemic started, I mean, uh, they couldn't just go to the store. So a lot of people at work have told me like they don't trust putting their information in. So it's been a learning curve for some people, but I haven't been affected by, you know, needing to online shop more. Uh, moving more into holiday shopping, statistically in-person shopping and in-person holiday shopping, we're already, you know, dying but COVID will put the final nail in the coffin for now. I think a lot more people are gonna start um, ordering online for holidays and that's not gonna be good for retail. Um, uh, so yeah, this year holiday shopping will be taking place mostly online, causing lots of seasonal job openings for shipping companies and also shipping delays. So if you're shopping online, order early so it gets here before Christmas or before whatever holiday you're uh, shopping for. Um, and after the pandemic, I predict a surge in in-person shopping, but I don't think it'll be ma maintained in the long run because more people will experience the benefits of online shop and get more Oh, we kind of, you kind of froze on us, Kendall. I'm in the basement, so the last thing you heard. <laughs> uh, just online shopping, um, it, that it'll be a surge, but it'll be short-lived. Yeah, because more people will uh, uh, experience the benefits because uh, they'll be forced to shop, shop more online this year. Mm -hmm. I'm going to hand it over to Mike and I'm going to have him wrap it up and close this up for us. And I thank you for to... tuning in for the MFF fireside chat focused on holiday spending in the year 2020. We hope that you picked up some good tips and tricks that you can apply this year as you look at holiday spending. As always at MFF, we are focused on all things financial literacy. We encourage you to learn more about our programs, such as our flagship program, The Standards of Financial Literacy, at morganfranklinfellowship.com. And we do encourage you as well, if this may not be for you, but you know somebody that could benefit from our financial literacy education, please pass it along. Thank you again for tuning in, and we look forward to seeing you soon.